She grew up without a father and her mother struggled with addiction. I felt alone, misunderstood. So she turned to men and drugs. If I didn't have pain pill, I couldn't get up out of bed. See how she found freedom. I was a hopeless drug addict and that I was gonna die that way. On today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. Three people were killed recently after a shooting took place at the West Freeway Church of Christ located in White Settlement, Texas. The gunman came into the church during the Sunday service and then started shooting. An armed security guard, Jack Wilson, took down the gunman with a single shot. A longtime West Freeway Church member, John Richardson, survived the shooting. John dove to the ground and laid on top of his wife when he heard the shots ring out. John says he feels no ill will toward the attacker and urges his fellow Christians to have grace in their response to the tragedy rather than expressing vengeance. His response has gone viral. Take a look. And we have to understand that this poor man, I don't know what his middle state was, but my heart goes out to his family because they have to live with this. And we have, we have, I know he took some lives, and he, but we have to remember he's a creature of God also, just like we are. And it was a sad thing that he had to come into the congregation and hurt people, and it's a sad thing that we had to hurt him. But I don't have any hate for this person. I can't, we can't have hate for these people. We can't have hate for anybody that does hate for us. We have to go on, we have to live that life of Christ that wants us to teach and preach and be that example of his on earth to every person we can meet. And that's, that's all we can do. We just have to pick up the pieces and go and just take care of who we can, take care of and appreciate every moment you have and love everybody with the love of Christ that you can love. It's a strong statement and a courageous statement. The church says they are grateful for all who have sent their prayers and comments in the wake of the incident. Yeah, that's quite a remarkable video they had of the whole thing as it played out. As it uh, played out, and then they had a security guard who uh, was trained. Mm -hmm. um, and I encourage churches, um, look at this. Yes. Uh, look at this. What would happen? If an active shooter came into your congregation, what would you do? And there the church was ready, um, and, and they took decisive action. And uh, it's an unbelievable tragedy. And you, you look at this, and the words of Solomon are true. I, I see the oppressed, I see their suffering, and I see that there's no one to comfort them. But he also says, I looked at the oppressor, and I see their suffering, and there's no one to comfort them. And to be thinking of the family of the shooter in this moment, uh, what they're going to have to live with, uh, what they're, they're going to have to go through, who is there to comfort them. Absolutely. Well, speaking of being an example to others, Newport News, Virginia residents Cheryl Barnes, along with Sharice Tisdale and Ms. Marvel, joined together three years ago to start a free breakfast stand outside a local school bus stop. They set up every Tuesday around 7.30 a.m. and serve around 70 kids ages 5 to 12. They call themselves the Bus Stop Ministry. Cheryl says the idea to start the ministry came after looking out of her window and seeing a child sharing her bag of chips with other hungry kids. Cheryl believes a child's success starts with their first meal of the day, breakfast. Plus, she wants to encourage children to dream big and be kind. So there's even a bus stop chant. Here's a few lines from it. This is going to be a great day. I thank God for waking me up today because I'm a scholar and I'm going to school so I can learn. So I can go to college if I want to, so I can be the leader God created me to be. Well, if you'd like to learn more about the Bus Stop Ministry or donate, you can via Venmo under Bus Ministry Newport News. What a great idea. <laughs> yeah, Talk about see the need, idea. meet the need. Yeah. I mean, And to say, let's have a positive yes. affirmation. Wow. Uh, and, and how important that is, how important it is to instill in children uh, that they have the capacity to be leaders. They have the pa capacity to be overcomers. Uh, you can be a scholar. You can go to college. You can make a difference. It all depends on how you view yourself. And so if you're speaking that into them when they're young, uh, 
Start thinking of the number of negative words a child is going to receive or you are going to receive through your lifetime. Uh, psychologists tell us that 80% of what, he, what we tell ourselves is real high negative. Uh, and you replace that with positive affirmation and start the day with that, that's great. You know, the other thing I love about this is it's not just an encouragement to the kids, it's really an encouragement to all of us because what they did was something any of us could do. I mean, they didn't, they didn't look and say, wow, isn't it a shame there are a lot of children that are hungry here. I yeah. mean, they just joined forces with what they had and they're making a difference. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, loved don't, it. don't complain about it and yeah. don't say, well, why isn't the church doing something? Be the church, be the person that intervenes and says, I can make a difference here. Well, we have another story that's gone viral. Special ed teacher Carrie Bremer met Jake Manning and his mother Jean four years ago and found out Jake's mom was battling terminal breast cancer. Jean was a single mom and the only family Jake had. And after talking to her husband and their children, Carrie made Jean an offer. Take a look. I fell in love with him instantly. And as she got sicker that year, I just thought, what, what is she gonna do? If you need a backup plan for Jake, then our family is happy to make him part of our family. And she said, I'll sleep better tonight than I've slept in a long time. That's a wow. As you heard, Jean accepted the offer and the two families started spending time together. Well, sadly, Jean passed away this past November, and as planned, the Bremers opened their home and Jake moved in. Carrie says the transition has been tough for Jake, but he's happy overall and is a blessing to them. Wow. Wow. Oh, that, is wow. A, that is a wow. <laughs> that is an incredible is wow to say, okay, I'm yeah. going to be the backup plan. Yep. Um, yay. I'm going to enlarge our family. Well, another teacher's changing the lives of her children. Keisha Yerby is a second grade teacher in Chesapeake, Virginia. And after school, she hosts Miss Yerby's Reading Adventures on Facebook Live. Keisha believes reading is vital for so many reasons. It helps with focus, with concentration, imagination, communication, language development, and intellect, just to name a few. Keisha reads books to her students through Facebook Live, and during the live video, she teaches her viewers reading tips, encourages them to answer questions, and helps parents connect to their children. Keisha says she wants children to realize that they are worthy and that they have greatness inside of them. Here's a clip of Keisha reading from a book called Nathan Straw. He's only four years old. And even though he's having all of this pain, he's being strong. He's being happy. When he has to have a needle put in his arm, he's being just like a statue. Every day he did bat every day he battled friends and family by his side. The Nathan Strong Army was along for the ride. As Nathan grew stronger, so did his crew. This little boy inspired them all to keep pushing through. Nathan Strong. So, even though he has had something really horrible to happen to him and he has cancer, he's inspiring other people. Can you guys think of someone else who has something bad to happen or something unfortunate that you don't expect to happen? What an incredible idea. I, I love this. And it's using all the tools that are available to us now. It's, it's so easy now to create video mm -hmm. and to create connection and to say, well, I'm gonna use Facebook Live. I, I know the children aren't supposed to be on that, but they are anyway. And so <laughs> uh, I'm gonna use this tool to connect with them. Yeah. And it's, it's wonderful. So you can do something like this. Uh, just start saying, you know, what, what great ideas can God give me that will really help people? It's once a teacher, always a teacher, but she's got the gift. Yes, she <laughs> That's does. That's great. <laughs> well, speaking of stories, we're very excited to bring you the epic story of St. Patrick. It's coming to theaters this March with tickets on sale now. Here's a look at the trailer for the new film, I Am Patrick. It was not my grace but God, who conquered in me and who resisted them all, that I might come to the Irish nations to preach the gospel. The preconception that we've got about St. Patrick is completely wrong.
Ireland was a place of barbarians at the end of the world. Get going, boy. It is slavery for life. Patrick, you are to travel to your homeland. Patrick. To hear the call to go back to Ireland terrified him. It was asking a lot of this man to do this. This does not have to be, Patrick. It is the will of God. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Who among you heeds the call? Why would this man put himself in danger among enemies who do not know God? People thought that this mission was crazy, that his efforts to Christianize Ireland were doomed to failure. Tell us the secret you know about Patrick. Things in the past can come back to haunt us. It's time to go. I'm not finished. No! Well, this St. Patrick's Day, you can see the film, I Am Patrick, and it's taken from his confession. Uh, the entire movie is based on the writings of St. Patrick that have survived. And there are just two. One is his confession, and the other is the letter to Coroticus. And here is St. Patrick. Many people don't know. He's the first person in history. This is back in the 5th century. He took against a stand against slavery. He also took a stand against sex trafficking, and that's why his voice still speaks today. At that point in time, Ireland was considered one of the most remotest parts of the earth. Why would anyone go there? Here, Patrick was taken from Britain as a slave himself. He was captured and then was a slave for years. He managed to get free. And then God called him to go back to the very people who had enslaved him and preach the gospel. So if you want to know the story of St. Patrick, not the legend of St. Patrick, the story based on his actual writings, I encourage you to go to this movie. I am Patrick. Uh, tickets are now on sale at IamPatrick.com. We're trying to get advanced ticket uh, sales so that we can add extra screens, extra theaters. It's going to be March 17th and 18th only. So St. Patrick's Day is celebrated by seeing the story, the true story of St. Patrick and how he changed Ireland, how he changed Europe, how he changed the world. Go to IamPatrick.com to find out more. It's great that it's so far in advance because we can mark our calendars, know that we can go. At the same time, we're getting tickets for ourselves. We're making it possible for others yeah. to see the film. And I would encourage groups to go. Yeah. You know, let's, let's have a larger discussion. What is it to get a call from God? Yeah. Uh, and how Patrick was led by dreams to say, okay, I'll, I'll give up my life of comfort and go to a people that do not know God. Very inspiring. Very inspiring. Well, coming up, raised by an addict, a woman vows to be a better mother than her own. When she was there mentally, she was a great mother. When she wasn't there, I felt alone, misunderstood. So how did she wind up 10 times worse? Find out right after this. A hopeless drug addict. That's how Sarah described herself. She spent years hooked on booze, drugs, and pills, and she expected to die that way. Sarah Meyer's home life was one filled with dysfunction. She grew up in poor Crossville, Tennessee, where her father left when she was young, leaving Sarah alone with her alcoholic grandma and her mother, who struggled with drug addiction, bipolarism, and alcoholism. 
When she was there mentally, she was a great mother. When she wasn't there, I felt alone, misunderstood. Sarah found belonging with kids from other broken homes. As she grew up, her identity was found in drugs and a toxic boyfriend. Then at only 15 years old, Hope entered the picture in the form of a pregnancy. Thinking that for once in my life that I was gonna be able to do something right, I was not gonna be the kind of mother that I had growing up, and so I stopped using drugs. She got clean and began to make positive changes in her life. But when she went into labor three months early, that hope began to fade. I had him and um, they brought him to me. He was lifeless and a little baby. I felt completely hopeless. And I felt like that I had been dealt a life of pain and that God hated me. My way to find comfort through my pain and my hurt was to do more drugs. Sarah would spend the next seven years using IV drugs and heavily abusing pain meds. She would have three children by 22, weaning herself off drugs just enough during the pregnancies. If I didn't have pain pill, I couldn't get up out of bed to change uh, my son's diaper. I thought I was okay in my justification because I wasn't an alcoholic. After she was charged with meth manufacturing, her kids were relinquished into foster care. Worried she'd lose her kids for good, Sarah once again tried to get clean. The shame and the pain of abandoning them was eating me alive. And so for eight months, I fought to try to get them back. I got a job, I almost had my own place. When she learned her son had broken his leg in a foster home, Sarah felt the pain of not being there. It pushed me over the edge and I went and I got a case of beer and I started drinking. My drinking led to me compromising with pills and then I was shooting up immediately within two hours. Now in jail, serving a year-long sentence for burglary charges, Sarah began the inevitable and painful detox process. She was forced to face a truth she had long ignored. I had the understanding that all of a sudden that I had became my mother, but 10 times worse. And so what I thought about Sarah was that I was a hopeless drug addict and that I was gonna die that way. Searching for something to keep her busy, Sarah began attending a faith-based recovery program where the women told her how much God loved her. And I kept thinking, you don't know me and you don't know the life I've been dealt, don't tell me God loves me. Their consistency to show the love of Christ about the fourth class in turned my heart to mush. Teacher of the faith-based 12-step class stopped the class and said, there's someone in here who wants to give their heart to Jesus. And I knew that God was talking to me and I received Jesus that day. Sarah had every intention of continuing to follow Christ. Upon her release in 2011, with few places to go, Sarah was back in her old environment and soon relapsed again. I remember thinking, God, I, I, I'm so back into this and I don't know how I'm gonna get out of it. High on meth, I've been up for three days, I remember saying, God, do for me what I cannot do for myself. And about 24 hours later, I hear boom, 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 boom. It was the police. Sarah was arrested for parole violation and was looking at four years in prison. Awaiting sentencing, Sarah had an unexpected visitor, the woman who had adopted two of her kids. I said, what are you doing here? And she said, I came to bring you hope. I said, okay, God. All right, so if I go to prison or if I go wherever, I'm gonna serve you. The court ordered Sarah to the drug abuse recovery program, Teen Challenge. She followed through on her promise and began to face her past and devote her future to study and pursuing the Lord. I learned who I was and um, my root issues and why I used drugs to begin with was abandonment, rejection, insecurity. After graduating from the program and working on staff at Teen Challenge, Sarah returned to Crossville, Tennessee. There, she founded Invitation Ministries, where they do faith-based program placement and addiction recovery. Not only is she enjoying her second lease on life, 
but she's also able to see her kids and have a second chance at being a mom. Me and my kids today have a beautiful relationship. God has mended what was broken. To know that I have broken the cycle with Jesus from uh, many generations before me is so rewarding. I get to share hope. It's more rewarding than anything that I could ever do with my life. You know, recovery when we're addicted to something is really difficult because we have to do what Sarah talked about. We got to go back to the root issues of why am I doing this? I mean, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, gee, I think I'd like to become a meth addict today. You know, it happens because there are broken places inside of us. And it's very hard to want to sign up to go back and wade through all the things that bring us there because in and of ourselves, we can't do that. It's just intimidating. It's painful. Uh, you know, we, if we had the answers, we wouldn't be addicted to the things we're addicted to. But here's the deal. When you give your life to Jesus, you don't walk through that alone. You walk through it with him and the tenderness and the gentleness and the forgiveness and the healing that he offers brings us to a place of wholeness that we could not achieve on our own. And I ha haven't even mentioned those that God brings around us to hold our hands, to put their arms around us, to encourage us in prayer. It's all part of becoming one of God's kids, a part of the body of Christ. If you're listening right now and you have an addiction, something you never intended to have happen to you, but it has, you know, it can be lots and lots of things. It can be gambling, it can be pornography, it can be overspending, it can be so many things. And maybe it's not as life impacting as what Sarah went through, but if it's got control of your life, it is. If it overrules you, it is. Wouldn't you like to be set free? You know you can. Jesus said he came to set the captives free. That's you and me, every one of us, until we understand that we were created by him with a plan and a purpose to live intentionally with an end, with an end result of spending eternity with him. You know, none of us is worthy of that. None of us can earn that on our own. That's why Jesus came. He paid the price for you and for me. Now, will you accept it today? Listen, swallow your pride if that's your issue. Grab hold of him if your fear says you can't do this because he's able, he's enough, and he's willing to be there for you. So today, say yes to the invitation to Jesus. When he asks, I'm standing at the door and knocking, open the door and I promise I'll come in and I'll, I'll dine with you, I'll sup with you, I'll have relationship with you. I'll be your all in all. That's the invitation to you today. I'll forgive your sin. I'll heal your shame. We all have it. You're invited to the table. Come today. If there's something in your life that you need to pray about, then call our toll-free number. It's 1-800-700-7000. Just call and say to the person on the other end of the line, I want to know Jesus today. I want to invite him into my life. We're waiting to hear from you. Gordon? Here's a verse for, for you from Isaiah chapter 43. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Let God make all things new for you today. God bless you. We'll see you again.